has been following us. Really? Who? I don't know. She looked like she was dressed in white. Oh my god, I love that for her. Hello? Well, Luke, that's not your line. So? Oh my god, can you just like stay in character? Hi, girl. Our story starts in 1854, when wealthy businessman Isaac Buchanan built the extravagant mountaintop home of his dreams, Akmar Manor. Due to the financial burden of the extravagant property, Isaac was forced to sell Akmar, at which point several different families moved in, raising children of their own. Today, the spirit of one little child is said to still play within its vacant walls. Allegedly. During the Second World War, the home was donated as a field hospital to the Royal Canadian Air Force. And due to the amount of injuries in battle, Akmar was quickly populated with soldiers in need, resulting in respite and anguish. In 1946, the final owners of Akmar, the Hungarian Sisters of Social Service, converted the home into a convent. The nuns occupied the manor until the late 1990s when they too could no longer afford the property and were forced to leave. And now, they're pissed. As we head into our investigation tonight, we'll search for the ghosts of a child, a soldier, and, you guessed it, a nun. All of these spirits lead us to Akmar Manor, located on the mountaintop of Hamilton, Hamilton Ontario. My name's Alex Kubrovic. I work for the city of Hamilton. Akmar is definitely one of the creepier buildings we take care of. There certainly are things that just really can't be easily explained. Bulbs burning out after we just replaced them. The windows are rattling. The whole house sounds like it's moaning. Akmar, most haunted place in Canada. There's always some level of hauntedness going on. It's haunted. All sorts of paranormal investigators have kind of come by and they thought that they've seen figures walking the halls. It's quite easy to get turned around and lost in here. Why Watch your step, watch your back. It gets dark quick, and uh, the walls are pretty thick, so sounds can kind of get funny. Golly gee, who needs this many chimneys? They're none of your business. Oh. It's been three uh, two jobs <laughs> and eight TikToks since my last confession. OK, where would you place this nunnery on the haunted meter? Level 16. You made it. Hey, I'm Katie Douglas. You might know me from Level 16 and Jenny and Georgia. I don't scare easy. If I actually saw a ghost, I think I would be generally fascinated. I really want to be a believer. I want a reason to believe. Luke and Matt scare me more than anything. <laughs> I'm curious, I'd say. Our first hotspot for investigation is a child's bedroom located on the second floor. After the Buchanans moved out, many families would call Akmar home. Several children were born and raised here, all of whom had rooms on the second floor. Okay, Katie, you lead the way. Oh, this is so cute. What a cinematic window. Wait, is there carpet? Oh my god. That's the part that's shocking. I overhear we have an incredible Hulk flesh wound. OK. What do you think that was? This would be a great window to stand at and cry about your long lost husband. I do that from subway windows. It's just not as cinematic, though. It's said that the spirit of one of the children who lived here still resides in this bedroom. Paranormal investigators claim that this ghost is named Deb. So should we talk to Deb? I think we should try. I personally can't help but feel like I would actually have something in common with a child ghost. So these windows do open, yeah? They might. Later. This is the real trick. Does this window open? Does this open? It does. Because here's the thing. When they go about oxygen, it's so important. Matthew, this isn't even close. Well, maybe it's that latch. And this just... Oh! <laughs> Idiots! You know, we are so We're good so... with mechanics. <laughs> OK, now that we have airflow, Matthew, take out your little iPod. A spirit box allows ghosts to communicate using radio frequencies. 
So we are going to attach it to soundproof headphones and that you'll listen to while Luke and I ask questions and you'll tell us what the ghost says. Can I hear you at all through them? If we turn the volume up loud enough, you shouldn't be able to. I had never seen a spirit box before. I thought it kind of looked like a toy. You're a vessel for the devil. Don't kill the messenger. As soon as I put them on, it sounded like nothing I've ever really heard before. Is there anyone here with us right now? I'm here. I see you. Wig! Where are you? Are you in the room with us right now? Read my mind. Where are we? We're in your house. We're in your bedroom. In your parents? <gasps> in your parents' home, yeah. Deb, what month was Matthew born? Really stumped her on that one. Deb, do you miss your family? Matthew <gasps> has it. Coming? <laughs> this is the best day of my life. I believe in ghosts. Deb. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I think? What? I think Deb needs a friend. I can feel her wanting to kill me as we speak. This actually looks really cute. I don't want to be cute. I'm not cute. Like a doll. Luke has it out to get me. Is there anything you want to say to us? Leave. Uh, Leave? I heard your name. <gasps> it said Matthew. That's crazy. It said my name. Goodbye. <laughs> Matthew, goodbye. Out now. Get no. out. You're pissing the ghost off. I don't want to go through this house alone. Hit the road, Jack. You guys have to come with me. Say goodbye. They're telling me secrets about you. Say goodbye. They're telling me secrets about you. Oh, gotta go. <laughs> Did you say that to the ghost? Yeah, gotta, gotta go. go. <laughs> TTYL ghost, sorry. <laughs> Very well could have been, Deb. Our second hotspot for investigation is the corridor, located on the main floor. During the Second World War, Akmar was converted into a field hospital to help treat injured Canadian soldiers. It was a convalescent hospital, so we're not talking major trauma, but it was more of a recovery hospital. Whoa. Such a creepy hallway. So, Akmar's lived many lives. Yeah. Yes. And soldiers lived out their days here. Check. From my knowledge, the grounds were used for recreational activities. There was a nine-hole golf course. It was cycling. It had a piano. There were no deaths. It's just not that kind of hospital. Regardless, paranormal investigators report seeing the apparition of a man thought to be a soldier roaming the main floor. So, I wasn't completely wrong. Like, literally, you were completely wrong. I was wrong about the hospital, but not about the soldier, OK? They would have had to die to be a ghost. You don't have to die to be a ghost. I mean, sorry, let's roll it back. You have to die to be a ghost, but you You're not to helping yourself right now. OK. It's our job tonight is to try and lure that man to come out and show himself to us. Katie, you're good with boys. I don't like the idea of being haunted by men, but I definitely have haunted them before. Why don't we give you the night vision camera? You lead the way. My ghost senses are telling me I, I feel masculine energy in this yeah. general vicinity. Just here. In an attempt to contact the wandering soldier, we'll use the flux prism. A flux prism is a motion detector for ghosts. Luke, you just crossed the line. This thing goes seven feet in either direction. Oh, I'm in the pipeline. I don't think that's us triggering it anymore, because it only makes a noise when something interferes with it, and it keeps being interfered with. Do you see that? So back away, Luke. Keep backing up. There. This red noise has not stopped going off. This is really freaky. There is for sure someone here with us right now. 
So if anything talks to us, we will have this guy and it will display their message on this screen. An envoy allows ghosts to communicate with visual cues and sayings. Katie, I'll follow your advice on this too. We can use yes or no. We can use letters or emotion expressions. Which do you think we should talk to the ghost with? We use the yes or no. I do better with emotions, I think. You do? Yeah. You? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if the ghost of the soldier is here, this will be the perfect tool for him to speak to us. Okay, is there a man in the hallway with us? Yes. Yes, it just answered yes. Well, let Katie take it away. Doesn't want to talk to us. No. So that's not true. <laughs> is your name John? Yes, right away. It is John. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. John's like right here. Yes. Are you a soldier? Maybe ask if he was a pilot. <gasps> Did you die violently? No. He's alive. Are you gay? Wait, why is there two yeses? No. Thought about it first. <laughs> Thought about it for a second. Maybe we could set it to the emotion. There we go. Did this house make you happy? Oh, <gasps> sad face. John, do you think I'm skinny? Smile if yes. <laughs> <laughs> John, Luke said you got exactly what was coming to you, and I'm glad you're dead. No, this kind of feels operative like a dating game. I thought it would be really interesting to try to tap into something a little more emotional. John, do you think you and I could work out? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sad John wasn't into me, just because I do feel like I do spend too much time with the living. Our final hotspot for investigation is the basement of Akmar Manor. The last owners of Akmar were the Hungarian Sisters of Social Service. The nuns converted the property into a convent for their religious practice and community service. Mmm, yummy. Katie, this looks like somewhere you would sleep. Katie, did you decorate this place? Because it's right up your alley. No, but it smells like my favorite candle. Rot. <laughs> <laughs> it's said, however, that during this time, the basement of Akmar was reserved strictly for the nuns and their private prayer. Whoa, what is this? Open it. But it's actually like gross. I really don't know if this is a good idea. Wait, what's that at the back of it? Okay, I'll pick you up here, burnt, hold this. That is definitely burnt Katie, stuff, are you, you sure guys? you wanna do that? Yeah. Oh my God. I had so many intrusive thoughts about just like something coming out of the darkness and grabbing it, so I made Matt get it. Oh. There's this, a like a spider. There's a spider right there. No, fuck off. Right there, look at it. Jesus, what is this? Uh, yeah, shake. <gasps> Jesus. shake it off. Yeah, shake it off. That's really cool, you guys. Extra mild, sweet old Virginia cigarettes. They're from 1959. Oh, Last year you could buy them. there like, secretly smoking down Packing here, dirt. and this is where she would smoke oh, so no literally. one would know? I don't think anyone wasn't allowed down here. I think the nuns just wanted a fucking break. When I'm exploring abandoned places, I feel like I'm totally in my element. Can we go in this one more room and then find the man? I guess if you say so. Oh, it was one such. <laughs> <laughs> the spirit of a nun dressed in white has been seen floating through these hallways. I've been hungry for female camaraderie. I'm sorry, we're not providing that for you. <laughs> it's us against them. <laughs> Girl power. Let's go, sisters. If the nun is down here, I have a tool that will help us see her. An SLS camera is a tool used to catch the apparition of a ghost. If something shows up on the screen without a person being there, we'll know it's a ghost. Wait, can you hold your hands like this again? That's what Matthew would look like if he got arrested. <laughs> Which is only gonna happen if I'm with you, Luke. <laughs> Say a Hail Mary. Hail Mary. Hey, sister. If you're here, say hello. <gasps> if you're here, 
Say hello. <gasps> it's Ooh, literally you. Joel. That's just our cameraman. Oh man. Not just our cameraman, yeah, it's Joel. He's doing a great job getting all the shots. Shout out to Joel Harvey. I feel like these nuns are more afraid of us than we are of them. No floating nuns. Take this. Okay. Give me the fucking Nintendo DS. Let the real investigation begin. Listen, Sandra, so I'm gonna need you to show up. Otherwise, you owe me $100,000. Threatening the nuns? Yeah, I'm gonna threaten the fucking nun. <gasps> <laughs> Have you seen the movie The Nun? The Nun never wins. Lucille, come on. I will convert to Catholicism if you show up. What's in here? Lucille. Get in. Is that, what's that? Mystery is stain. that blood? It kind of looks like it, doesn't it? That's not blood. No, that fully fucking looks like blood. No, it's, it's, it's brown. Does. No, that's what, how blood dries. It's a blood dries. Have you ever seen dried blood? The blood dries. Blood? I work at the morgue. Sorry. That's a blood dry. Okay, Katie, are you <laughs> with okay, me? Okay, Dana that... Day Lewis. I'm gonna need you to make an appearance. We got a lot of money riding on you right now. What the fuck is over here? <gasps> Katie, get in here right now. You're gonna have a heyday. <laughs> oh Jesus, that was just me. Sorry. <laughs> Why is there so many cows and why is there nuns? Wow. There's so much cow content. And so many cobwebs. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I love cows and cobs. Okay, so here's the thing. Katie does not get scared, but I have called in a little help from someone you may know. Hey, I'm Romy Schrader. I'm on Ginny and Georgia with Katie and I'm here to terrorize her. <laughs> my plan is to dress up Romy as the lady in white and place her somewhere in the basement where she will then jump out and scare Katie. Are you filming? Crazy. As part of the prank, we told Katie that every episode we do solo investigations. I don't think we were getting much traction coming down here as a group. You're distracting me for sure. But what she doesn't know is Romy and I are on the other side of the room divider while hidden cameras watch her every move. Okay, get out. Let the games begin. And do your thing. You got it, you guys. Nice. All right. Oh my God, it's so dark. This is probably the scarier part of the investigation. Looking for the lady in white. Just over here in the doorway is supposed to be where the most activity is picked up. Watch your step. Put that together. <laughs> <laughs> you look so different on this fucking camera. How was I supposed to see? You? Like, uh, what, you, you want me to turn around and then see you in the corner of my eye or something? Honestly, yeah, that was the plan. <laughs> <laughs> I did my best. You thought you could get me. We no, really we really did. did. <laughs> they thought that they could try to scare the unscarable. Romy stole the show again. <laughs> Literally. I'm Romy Schrader, and this prank did not work. And Luke is stupid. The scariest thing in the room is still me. <laughs> this concludes our paranormal investigation into Akmar Manor, and it's now time to decide if this place is truly haunted. The evidence for Hotspot 1, the child's bedroom, is that there was a spirit box and apparently it worked. Matthew, <gasps> has it coming? Yeah! <laughs> The ghost said my name. Yes, Katie joked around at first, but the ghost actually said Matthew. She was saying, leave, get out. Leave, out now. Jojo. I mean. And there's a radio hit right there, smash hit, mm, released mm. June 2004. But there was so much time between those two responses that I don't think it was Jojo. I think it was a ghost, yo. <laughs> The evidence from our second hotspot, the main floor corridor, is that we were speaking with John. Is your name John? 
Yes. I could have been like, is her name Bradley? And it still would have went off. You believed it was John. I know you did. Because it, if I said John. his name was Derek the Ghost, Derek the Ghost sounds like a kid's cartoon. John the Ghost, that's a horror movie. Honestly, I would watch Derek the Ghost. The evidence for our third hotspot, the basement, is that there was literally no evidence besides my prank. I will say there was something suspicious about the various photographs of nuns and cows. Why is there so many cows and why is there nuns? Something about that was sinister. Mm -hmm. It was evil. Exactly. There's a story there that we have not unpacked. It was utterly disturbing. The whole investigation, the reason we're here, do you think Aquamar is haunted? The ghosting verdict on our paranormal investigation into Aquamar Manor is. Um. Not haunted. haunted. It is He's haunted. Gonna always say it's not Just haunted. because Luke's prank didn't work, he thinks it this isn't is haunted. This is the most non-haunted place haunted. that no, we've no, gone. No, no, no. For anyone who's curious, it was it was an overwhelming feeling of childlike wonder. I think we somehow managed to scare away ghosts. None of this was real. <laughs> Get it? Because none. So ghosts are percent. fucking fake. <laughs> it was all real. Don't listen to Luke. Oh. Close the door on your way out. Mm.